It's not about motivation. Winners need discipline. Wake up and win today. Discipline comes from within. Boxing mm. Media in association with Boxro. Uh, delighted to be joined by Spencer, the knowledge fear on. Spencer, I've got a feeling we've got you sat somewhere in a basement or I, I don't know. I'm just trying to visualise it. Uh, this is actually my office, you know. But I'm oh, just okay, sat okay. It's my office in my air. I mean, alhamdulillah, I'm being blessed to have an office in my house. So yeah, I'm actually in my office, but I'm sat on the floor. Let me see. Why, why Spencer sat on the floor? Why not a chair? Mm, I'm just in a reflectionary uh, reflecting mood today. So, okay. yeah. So. so, anything to do with the quote behind it? Happiness is not a destination, it is a way of life. Anything to do with that? Um, no, but it is actually a way of life. People get too confused about what happiness is. You know what I mean? And we are, you know what I mean? Uh, what I realize is that we have to, we have to work from value and not strive for it. So, and if you're working from value, you understand that you are the actual key to your value, right? And how you value yourself and others. It's, that's how you got to do it. What we do as human beings, we actually try and strive for value. And we look for the value in the validation from others when the validation should come from yourself. Hence why it's called self-esteem. Well, that's another story for another day. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I like that bit of wisdom. Cheeky bit of wisdom dropped at the start. Um, I want to start off talking to you about, we've just seen the weigh-in for Joe Joyce and Cash Ali. Joe, I don't know if you've seen it, has come in at a career heaviest. And Cash has apparently come in at a career second best, if there is such a thing. When he fought for the IBF European, I think he's about four pounds heavier than that. So he's probably, I'm assuming, the best shape he could possibly ever be. Uh, and I don't know if Joe's deliberately coming heavier because there was some talk in the presser yesterday that Cash was saying that, oh, you, you know, you've been drinking and you've been eating too much, not taking me seriously. So just want to get your views and opinions on that. Is there such a thing in heavyweight boxing where he's coming heavy because he's just been binge eating? I don't know. I don't want to throw speculation. What I do know is that um, Joe Joyce is a consummate professional. Mm -hmm. Um if he is, so you've got to give me juice. Like he comes second best against Zhang. There's no disgrace in that. You know what I mean? He just got tagged twice. And like maybe Zhang is just his bogeyman. Right? Because you realize like A can beat B and you know how it goes. So it's just different. So it is one of those things. Do you do you give Cash Ali any chance in that fight? Because looking at the odds and uh people's opinions i think andy lee and the people that have seen cash sparring gyms are the only people that are saying he's got an opportunity he could win this fight but any public opinion anyone that's not seen these sparring sessions i've been with against fury and uh all all the top guys they're all saying he, he, he gets blasted out in a few rounds you know what that's, that's their opinion like cash ali's i mean he's he, he's a decent pro but you got to be realistic and say that he's the underdog and he's being chosen deliberately to 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 help Joe as he's trying to rebuild and come back into this thing, right? So that's what he's brought in. But as long as he's he's this is the thing, right? It's not sometimes it's not even about winning the fights. It's if you could put in a decent enough performance to keep your name keep on ringing, and hopefully um Cashley can do that. I don't expect him to win the fight, um to, to be real, but what I do know is that he's decent, but if he truly believes in himself, the only time I can recall like his fight with David Press, you know what I mean? Which it was a very lackluster performance, and then um it was Cash Dracula in that fight, way. Right? It's That's like cool. so yeah, so but you know what? He, he's there working with Richard Towers, who I've known for years. Um Richard's come out of the Ingle Gym and 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 I don't think enough credit, seeing as we're talking about trainers and that, right? I don't think enough credit has been given to the Ingle Gym, right? I'm going to be real with you. Because the Ingle Gym, unlike many guys in boxing, right, would take guys from the grassroots and turn them into world champions. Right now, what we're seeing is guys who are just jumping in through the back door now and turning guys into world champions or guys who are just on the cusp of world championships level. What the Ingles have done is actually fantastic what they've done. I mean, rest in peace, Brendan Ingle, because he was absolutely superb. But going back to this fight here, 
Joe Joyce is meant to win this fight. Joe Joyce is meant to win this fight realistically in about under five rounds. Right? He's meant to. But we don't know psychologically those two knockouts have done to him. We don't know. And Cash Ali could be the right person and, and in the right place. And then we, we don't know. But I would still go with Joe Joyce, his, his pedigree and everything else and the things that he's done. He's beaten really good guys. And how fantastic does his win over Josie Parker look now? Definitely so. It does, isn't it? It does. It does. Because as far as I'm concerned, um, Josie Parker is the most improved heavyweight in the world. I and I would say Parker's actually better than when he, when he was world champion. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll get a short answer for you on this because we could go off completely off track here. But you know, you touched on the Ingle Gym there, and I, I do hear this a lot when people say Brendan, what Brendan did was amazing, and Dom's not le really carried that on. But uh, here's another viewpoint to that: How on earth can you kind of carry on what a legend like? Because Brendan's one of these characters is a one is a once in a lifetime character. How could anyone kind of carry on what he did? Because it sounds like an almost impossible job because there'll never be another Muhammad Ali. They'll, do you get what I'm saying? There's never been another Mike Tyson. Yeah, type yeah. You know what? Regardless of that, but his sons have done well. They've done well with Junior Whitter. His sons oh. have done well, right? So we can't. It's that's going to be that's too hell difficult. Broke. That's it's going to be it's going to be too hard. It's like we turn around and say, "Oh, the son of Muhammad Ali." No, forget about it. Do you get what I'm trying to say, Tia? But regardless, they still continue that legacy. Even though it's not at, to, to the high level of what their dad did, but they're still continuing their legacy. So, you know what I mean? I've got to give props to, to, to what the Ingles have done. Definitely. So, uh, and I want to speak to you about Ryan Garcia and his recent stuff on social media. Obviously, people are saying he's mental, he's on drugs, all this kind of stuff. And I like to keep a neutral ob observation on it because I'm not with him, so I don't want to judge him on that. But he's obviously talk about, talked about these, you know, conspiracy theories regarding uh, the elites and what they do with children. And we've seen stuff out about Epstein's Island recently, Bohemian Grove, all these kind of things that obviously we don't know for a fact if they're true or not. But obviously there's all sorts of reports about it online. Um, what, what do you think should be happening in this situation like? Like who needs to get hold of this situation? Because I was speaking to Gareth Davis earlier, oh. and I said, Derek James is quite a reasonable blog. If he thinks there's any mental issues, surely you'd just refuse to train him. Yeah, but well, maybe I don't think there are mental issues. Do you know what I mean? Maybe that is just his opinion, and he's being thrusted into the spotlight. But he did come off and say something about mental health as well. I'm not a psychologist, so I don't know, right? But conspiracy theories, right? Uh, uh, conspiracy theories until they're proven as fact. So I'm not, you know, what I mean? when he, he's touching on subjects that I'm not privy to, right? So I can't speak on that. Um, by my own opinions and my own conspiracy theories and my own, there are a lot of things that go on. So I don't want to get too deep into it to scare people. But he, he's saying things, and if that's what he believes then, you know I mean, you know, it's a simple rule that you believe in your belief until it becomes your reality. And that's what's happened. That's his reality. He has to live his reality. But the thing now about the world that we're living in, because of social media and everything, and as soon as you get a name and you put something out, your words are not your own anymore. So he said what he said, and he's, he's saying stuff. And he did something with Andrew Tate as well. And I'm trying to sit down... Like I'm trying to think there's a must be a conspiracy in there. Is he trying to sell the fight? Maybe Andrew Tate's got a percentage of Ryan Garcia. I don't know. I mean, so... But I do hope the, the young man is safety. I do hope that he's okay. I do hope. That's what I can say. I do hope. If uh, if there's... A, it's a weird one because you got Devin Haney preparing for this fight. They're obviously in camp. And at the minute, uh, I've seen today that the WBC have put something out where... Apparently, they're asking the uh, boxing commissions in America to look into Ryan's mental health and state, etc. But then I'm just saying, like, whose responsibility should it be? Derek James, Eddie Hearn, Oscar De La Hoya, or the Zone? Like, who should be making it? Because there could be fans in this situation that are buying tickets. Everybody flights. that you 
called, everybody that you called there is their responsibility because they have a vested interest in that fire. So it's all fun. of them. Because fans would be buying tickets for this event, booking hotels, all this kind of stuff. Yeah, but I still think you're going to turn up and fight. Do you mean? But I really do. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll move on to a big debate in the heavyweight division now. So Anthony Joshua blasts out Francis Ngannou, which I know you said you saw happening. And uh, I know a lot of people didn't expect it to happen. But, you know, you, you said he was going to blast him. Bro, around bro, bro, too. Um, thinking me there. Don't just brush over, oh, well, you said it's going to like it was nothing. No, you that said it. Cool. I said it was going to be a grotesque mismatch, and that's exactly what it is. And that's no. not me taking it away from Francis Ngannou, who's a superb athlete in UFC. But it's UFC. This is professional boxing. And a, a clued up, tuned in Anthony Joshua is nightmare for anybody. Right? And it's the first time that I've seen Anthony Joshua look so fluid. He looked fluid. When I saw him against uh, um, Wallin, he looked fluid against Wallin. But I said, look, you used to beat a Wallin inspiring. You, was, you, you beat him twice in the amateurs. So you, of course you're going to be fluid. But no, Anti Joshua is looking fluid. And Anti Joshua is a big, big problem for anybody. The, the debate now is, you know, Eddie Hearn's coming out and saying AJ is the best in the world. He beats Usyk in the third fight. Uh, but the debate in this is, because I remember when I the agree, fight... I Eddie Hearn. So, so I agree saying... with Eddie Hearn that he beats Usyk in a in a first fight. Okay, um, I do. I agree with him. I really do think. So, where does this argument sit? If when Anthony Ngannou... Joshua's... I think we lost. No, bro, I didn't hear you. Sorry, man. I said we lost each other for a second. Uh, basically, when Ngannou uh, Fury got made. Yeah. Eddie was quoted as saying that Ngannou wouldn't even win an English title. So are we now saying AJ blasting a guy out that wouldn't win an English title makes him number one in the division? That's that's the argument I'm putting out there. Because these are the kind of things I've read on the comments. You know, somebody uh, in the comments read that, you know, he, he, he knocked out a guy that was static. Not, not taking anything away from what AJ did because he did what he had to do. But what I'm saying is, does that make you the best in the world? Uh, just an argument for you to answer. No, no. What I'm trying to say is this. I'll still say that Tyson Fury is number one in the world. Tyson Fury had a really disgusting bad night, right? I'll still say Tyson Fury is number one in the world. I'll still say that Usyk is number two in the world. And I'll say that Anti Joshua is number three in the world simply because of the men, both those other two guys are unbeaten. So... Yeah, even regardless of Tyson Fury's last performance, Tyson Fury is still the number one heavyweight in the world. And you know what I picked up from both uh, Tyson and AJ? Whether they've had a good performance or a bad performance, neither of them, uh, especially when it's been a bad performance, have ever made excuses. And that's something I've kind of picked up in their characters that I don't think many people have. Uh, have you noticed that? Because Tyson even now refuses to say that he had a bad camp or bad anything. Um he just says, yeah, because I asked him again last week. He was like, no, I had a perfect camp. And AJ, you know, his performance against Franklin, etc. cetera, um, he's never said anything. He's just, he just got on with it. Well, that is that's that is the, the real professional side to, to Tyson Fury. We say, well, I, I can't make no excuses. Because he also knows, you make excuses, you make, and you actually make things worse. Right? It is what it is, and that's it. No problem. We'll move on. Yeah, fair play. And if Fury and AJ did fight each other without going into breakdowns, etc., who, who is it a 50 50? Is it 60 40? How, how do you see it right now? Looking at both men's I'm recent gonna, form, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say this, right? Um, that unfortunately, we're living in a world of microwaves, so people will forget the body of work that you've done, right? Because as soon as AJ lost to Usyk, he was useless, right? And when Tyson Fury knocked out Deontay Wilder in their third fight, Deontay Wilder is the greatest thing since Deontay Wilder. Tyson Fury is the greatest thing since sliced bread, all right? Then all of a sudden now he he he, he, he boxed he boxed Dylan White and then he boxed um, Derek Chisora, um, and then he fights in Garnu and now all of a sudden now Tyson Fury is useless. Come on, man, right? Well, all of a sudden. We've seen a body of work and a good man that Anthony Joshua's beaten 
He loses to Usyk and then all of a sudden, Andy Joshua is useless. You know what I mean? I'm saying whoever's got their mind right come fight night, if those two are to go and fight each other, that guy is going to go and win. Seriously. <laughs> right? Because Anti Joshua, under the, the, the guidance and tutelage of um, um, Ben Davison, and Ben Davison would be the catalyst in this fight. Ben Davison would be the one why, if he worked with Anti Joshua, then Anti Joshua could possibly beat Tyson Fury. Because he knows the flaws, he knows all these things of Tyson Fury. If Ben Davis is in Andy Joshua's corner, then I'm tipping Andy Joshua to win that fight. Should be a fascinating build up. Uh, and the last thing I want to speak to you about, Spencer, news kind of broke in the last couple of days that Chris Eubank Jr. is now a free agent. Uh, nothing's come officially from his team, but uh, it may appear that that is the case. Uh, have you heard anything? I heard the same thing as you. Okay, where do you think right. he, he should be going and what, what fight should he be kind of taking? Because it seems like he's, he holds all the keys to his own kingdom now. He does, and I'm just going to be real with you, right? Chris Eubank, um, and, and forget about that that um, Chris Eubank, um, Terrence Crawford fight. That's nonsense. That's in the gym. Yeah, let's just call this one out. We get good publicity from it. That's rubbish. That's not mm -hmm. happening. He is no, it. Ever. There is no talk whatsoever. I put my life on it about that fight happening. Okay. Right? That's just, yeah, let's just get some story out there. Simply to take the shine off of Conor Ben with them in talks about this Manny Pacquiao thing. But and people so stupid, they're buying into it. But is Pacquiao uh, Ben the same sort of thing? No, because hey, no, because one's a jaded um, legend fighting an up and coming guy who's still got things to clear up. So no, it it doesn't. It's still a great fight. You know what I mean? It's still a very good fight because it's still Manny Pacquiao. And yeah, but you know, the game's the game, man. The game is the game. I would like to see Chris Eubank, Chris Eubank, and Conor Ben get it on. Why not? I would like that so much. Okay. Um, the last thing, Spencer, I just I randomly just thought of this. Obviously, I, I know you watch a lot of small hole boxing. You, you got your eye on boxing worldwide. Um, just give me a, one name that you think maybe might break out in the by the end of this year. That fans be like, oh shit, Spen Spencer Fiona mentioned this guy a year ago. Uh, worldwide, uh, Ab Abdullah Mason. Oh yeah, I've seen him. Uh, top rank fighter, yeah. Top rank fighter. Abdullah Mason, yeah, he, he's the guy. Yeah, young kid, very good kid as well. Know his family, know his dad. Abdullah Mason is going to be the breakout star. He's going to be the kid that's going to blow and blow and blow and blow. That's okay. the guy who I got. That would have been great if he got knocked out there, as bad as it sounds, because I would have had it on camera. <laughs> <laughs> whoever it was that it was the sister opening the door on you uh, so yeah it would have been great that oh, no. well, it was my little daughter was it? yeah it would have been would have been great content that Spencer yeah, getting it would have been. The door. Uh, Spencer I appreciate your time and uh, I hope Ramadan's going well for you you've got another what 10 minutes or so to open your fast and um, yeah, yeah so what, what's, on, what's on the menu what are you eating today um, today I'm I'm having I'm Jamaican, man. Oxtail with rice and peas. That's what I'm having. All right. Oxtail, rice and peas. Right. Enjoy that. And uh, we'll catch you soon. I can't wait. 10 minutes. But, you know I mean? Because it ends so early. Like, Maghrib prayer, which is, like, the the two non-Muslim people. It's, like, the full prayer of the day. It's... Sunset, it, it's, uh, sunset prayer, yeah? Yeah, it's yeah, sunset prayer. It's, it's, it's relatively easy because it comes in very early. I remember back in the day, man, it was like 9.30. Do you remember? <laughs> so, yeah, we it's, a, it's, it's, it's quite easy. But, yeah, I mean, to, to, to everybody out there, Muslims and non-Muslims, I wish you peace. All right? Peace, two things, I'm bouncing, bro. Keep up the brilliant work that you're doing with Boxing King Media because it's a, it's a pleasure to see how the channel's grown. Because people don't know that I've known you before you was doing any of this kind of stuff. So, you know what I mean? Just keep up the good work, bro. And send my love to, to your family, man. Take care. God bless, bro. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. I got a question for you. 
where can discipline take you? Discipline points you towards your goals. 